Oh, this? That is an SKR Pico in my pocket, and I am happy to see you. So yes, the SKR Pico, this is Big Tree Tech's new small form factor controller board. It's quite small, it's not quite feature rich, but it should have everything you need to run most 3D printers. Is this the new controller for you for your upcoming build? Let's take a look at it on the bench. So let's start off with unboxing our SKR Pico. And as you can see, it comes in a uh, relatively simple box, nice graphics, it's pretty sturdy. So hopefully nothing gets crushed in shipping. Open it up. And first off, we have the SKR Pico itself and its protective uh, wrapper. Let's see what else we got. We have a USB A to USB C cable. This is a USB C plug on the SKR Pico. We have this little adapter here. This is for wiring from the SKR Pico itself to the GPIO on a Raspberry Pi. We have some screws and jumpers and a very, very squished signature Big Tree Tech rubber ducky. And lastly, the business card. So let's put the extras aside for now and take a look at the SKR Pico. So first off, as you can see, it's called the SKR Pico and it definitely lives up to that name. So just to give you a size comparison of how big this really is, there's the SKR Pico. Next to it, we have a SKR 2, a Duet 2, and the venerable ramps. So as you can see, it is a quite small controller. It's approximately the same size as a Raspberry Pi full size, so the Raspberry Pi 4 in this case. And that's not the only thing that it has in common with the Raspberry Pi, and we'll, we'll get to that later. So starting off with the brains of the SKR Pico, it's a RP2040. Now, for those that don't know what the RP2040 is, it's actually a Raspberry Pi MCU. In fact, it comes with the Raspberry Pi Pico. So if you're wondering where the name came from, um, it's not only the size, it also has to do with the controller. Now, what is the RP2040? Well, it's a dual core ARM Cortex M0 processor. It's 133 megahertz. I'll have all the specs on the screen there for those interested. And this is the first time I believe we are seeing this MCU in a 3D printer controller. I have seen some homebrew uh, type setups that are using the RP2040 uh, to control little add-on boards, but this is the first time I've actually seen it integrated into a dedicated controller for a 3D printer. Now it does have some limitations, namely uh, it only has like 30 GPIO pins, two UART, two SPI controllers, two IC controllers, and 16 PWM channels. So what that means is because of the lack of pinouts essentially, you're not going to see full size, full featured boards such as a SKR Octopus or a Spider, for example, using the RP2040. It's probably going to be relegated to smaller boards with less features simply because it does not support all those additional hookups. Now, how does the RP2040 uh, compare to other MCUs on printer controller boards for Clipper? Uh, I'll have the list on the screen here, but you can see that it does fare quite well compared to other common boards. And that is another thing that you need to know about this. This MCU, at the moment, only supports Clipper. This board right here, currently, you can only run the Clipper 3D printer firmware on it. Um, I believe at this time, the folks over at Marlin are working on trying to get Marlin running on this. However, at this time, Clipper is the only supported firmware for this controller. So you are gonna have to pair this up uh, with a Raspberry Pi or equivalent uh, to run your 3D printer. So what do you have available for hookups on the SKR Pico? Uh, so we'll just start here with the power and work our way around. We have our power in, and this is either 12 or 24 volt. Uh, our heater bed hookup. Uh, this is designed apparently with the Voron V0 in mind. So you should be able to use it on smaller machines. However, you may wanna be careful with trying to use this if you're trying to power a high wattage heater. Uh, definitely look more into the documentation. Hopefully they actually add a clarification stating what the maximum bed output is. Um, we have our hot end heater hookup. We have a laser hookup, a USB-C. Atop the top here, we have our four motor hookups, E, X, Y, Z1, and Z2. Z1 and Z2 are slaved together. There's only four stepper drivers on this controller. They're all under this heat sink right here. So unfortunately, you're not gonna be able to do any independent gantry tramming uh, with dual Z setups 
with this controller board. But if you're only running a uh, one Z motor, for example, uh, that's a non-issue. And if you're fine having your two Z motors uh, slaved together, it's a non-issue. Under here, we do have the four drivers again, and they are TMC 2209s, which are very common now in the 3D printer controller sphere. On the side, we have our UART and power connection to the Raspberry Pi. And it does hook up using this cable here. And this actually will power a full-size Raspberry Pi 4 as well. So you can use this controller to power your Raspberry Pi. No need for a buck converter or a separate power supply. Next to it, we have three fan controllers. And these are all controllable fan controllers, CNC fan controllers. So remember the days when full-size boards would have one controllable fan. And if you were lucky, you had two heater outs and you can use that second heater out if it wasn't used for that second controller fan. Even small boards today come with three controllable heater fans. So I'm glad we're at that point now with controller boards. Along the bottom here, we have our bed thermistor, our hot end thermistor, X, Y, and Z end stops. We have an extruder end stop right here. And right here, we actually have a hookup for a five volt controllable RGB strip. So if you wanna run uh, controllable RGBs, LEDs, you have the ability to plug in here. And again, it's five volt. Now, if you're using a BL Touch, for example, you have servo and probe hookups here. Uh, if you are using an inductive probe, for example, you have your three pins here and you can select voltages uh, using these pins here and whether the probe itself uh, is MPN or PMP. And there are additional pins as well uh, with a jumper for putting it in boot mode and USB power mode. And if you wish to run with sensorless homing, you are gonna have to put jumpers on whatever driver you wish to use sensorless homing with. And on the back, we just have some labeling and additional components. So the board itself has all the features that a basic 3D printer will need. Um, motor control for XYZE, you have your end stop hookups, the ability to power a bed and a hot end heater, you have fan controls. So for most machines, this has pretty much everything you need. Now, if you are again running a machine where you need to control five independent motors or more, this isn't going to be the controller for you. Um, if you're looking to control different voltages of fans, you're not gonna be able to. Um, it, this board is pretty basic compared to other boards nowadays, but it is meant for being a small, simple controller board for small printer builds, like the Voron V0, for example. So now let's go over how you flash and set up the SKR Pico. Now, since it does run Clipper, you are gonna to have to pair it with a Raspberry Pi of some sort or equivalent. Uh, we'll use the Raspberry Pi 4 for this example here. Now, there is a little bit of a difference with the RP2040 compared to other controller boards you may have flashed in the past. So what I'm gonna recommend is go ahead and install your Clipper interface of choice on the Raspberry Pi. I went ahead and installed Mainsail, updated it to the latest version, and then I started the process of flashing the SKR Pico. Um, you'll see why in a moment here. So flashing the SKR Pico is Quite simple, uh, if you flashed an SKR before, it's pretty much the same process, only we're not gonna be using an SD card. So you're gonna go through the process of doing the make command uh, to make a flash file for the SKR Pico, and I'll have a link in the description below to the SKR Pico GitHub uh, with all the documentation so you can follow along to make a flash file to update your SKR Pico. Always make sure that you check the documentations as things change over time. Unfortunately, this video cannot be updated. So if things change in the future, uh, whatever the documentation says, that is your Bible. Follow that versus what you see in the video right now. So after going through and making the flash file for the SKR Pico, you're gonna have to extract it from the Raspberry Pi, I use WinSCP for that. And you're gonna have to drag and drop it onto the SKR Pico. So for that, you're gonna need some jumpers and you're gonna have to put two jumpers on the board itself. It's called out in the documentation, but essentially you have to put one on the boot jumper and also one on the USB power jumper. And then you're gonna take your controller board by itself and you're gonna plug it into your computer via USB. And then once it's plugged in via USB, uh, give it a moment, it should pop up on your screen as basically a thumb drive, for example. And you're gonna have to drag and drop the file that you made for the firmware into it. It should reboot really quickly, and that is it flashing itself. And then you're gonna have to remove the jumper for the bootloader and push the reset button. And that's it, it should be flashed at that point. 
you can go ahead and unplug it from your computer and install it in your printer. Don't forget to remove the jumper for USB power. So this is why I recommend installing your interface of choice for Clipper on your Raspberry Pi first and updating that fully before flashing your SKR Pico. Um, since you have to flash it via USB and depending on how you install this on your printer, you may not have access to the USB port. So it would really suck to go ahead and go through the whole process only to have to pull this out after doing an update to your mainsail install, for example, um, to reflash your controller board because the firmware is now outdated. So we have all the software stuff done. We're ready to go ahead and put this in our machine. Now, as I alluded to, uh, it has more in common with the Raspberry Pi than just its size. It also shares the same screw layout as the Raspberry Pi. So you can actually mount this stacked to safe size and make it a really compact package. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So with the addition of some standoffs uh, and a printed bracket here, for example, you can make a pretty nice compact sandwich for controlling your printer with Clipper. Uh, again, this is a full-size Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, we are connected via UART, and the SKR Pico is also powering the Raspberry Pi 4 itself. Uh, now be aware, uh, when it comes to like sizing your standoffs, you are gonna have to get at uh, some hookups potentially that are underneath the Raspberry Pi. So when it comes to sizing things, make sure you use appropriate size standoffs. You don't want anything too close and accidentally shorting out. Uh, all the hookups on the size of the SKR Pico are JST and they do come out the side. Um, now, when it comes to designing and mounting this, you're gonna, gonna have to keep that in mind. Um, since your wires are gonna have to come out the side, you are gonna have to take into account the additional width and the bend radius of your wires uh, when it comes to mounting this and locating this, as well as being able to access uh, anything that is hooked up. So again, all the hookups on the side are 90 degree JSTs. Now you can even make this more compact. Now this is probably the setup I'll be using and I believe most others will as well. And that is pairing it with the Raspberry Pi Zero. The reason why is you are no longer uh, blocking these additional hookups here that are on the board itself and not at the periphery. Uh, you can bring this in relatively low um, and still getting full access at everything and having a single fan, for example, blowing horizontally across both uh, can cool both at the same time. Also with the current cost of Raspberry Pis, um, many are looking for budget options at this time, and this is a budget board. Now, one thing to note is while it does share the same screw pattern as the Raspberry Pis, it also shares the same screw size hole. Uh, the Raspberry Pis are designed for an M2.5 screw, not an M3, which is very common with three printer builds. So if you do plan on using M3 screws and hardware and standoffs uh, to put everything together, uh, you may have to do a little finagling to ensure that the screws go through uh, the mounting holes. Now, after we decided our initial configuration and have everything flashed, we are gonna have to power the board. So let's go ahead and hook up a power supply. And again, if you are hooking your Raspberry Pi up to the SKR Pico using the included uh, connector cable for UART and power, you're not gonna have to hook up anything additional to your Raspberry Pi, uh, except for a camera if you wish to. And we can go ahead and power it up. And you can see right here, uh, we do have some notification LEDs uh, once everything is powered for power, bed, end stops, etc. cetera. Um, but this one LED, this green one, this is actually an addressable RGB LED. You can set it for any color uh, and I have it set up for green. So once the actual firmware loads, the configuration loads and everything's good to go, uh, this light flashes green and it lets me know that the board is fully booted up into the Clipper environment and the printer is ready to go and print. So what are my plans for the SKR Pico? Uh, well, as I went over in the video, it's really a controller meant for smaller, simpler printers. Uh, so what I will be saving it for is I have an upcoming Ratrig V Minion build that I plan on using this for. Uh, the Ratrig kit that I'm using will be just the mechanical kit. I'm gonna be using my own electronics and part of that is gonna be using an SKR Pico and hopefully I'm gonna be finding a place to mount this on the printer itself. Uh, the base design has a separate controller box uh, that connects to the printer. I'm not a huge fan of that. I wanna see if I can mount everything on the printer itself. So that's what this will be saved for. 
As always, if you do have any questions, please ask them in the comments below. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel and ring that bell so you won't miss out on notifications like any upcoming live stream builds. I do stream weekly on this channel. If you want to help support the content I create and the things I do, I have links in the description. And as always, I hope you learned something new today and have yourselves a great day. Thank you.